Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we will look at how to create a macro that will reoccur every set number of minutes or hours so that you could have a macro operation such as sending an email or saving a version of a file reoccur every four hours for example. So there are multiple reasons why you might find a use for this type of macro. For this example here, I'm going to get a message box appear on screen, something, something that we can visually see is reoccurring. Now let me pop into the developer tab and the visual basic window, and I already have a module in play here ready for our example code. So let me start a macro, and what I want is I want a message box that's going to tell me to take a break, because I work far too hard, <laughs> apparently. And so I'm going to get this to pop up and prompt me for it, so I regularly take a break from staring at my screen, and I get to stretch my legs, because maybe we, we get a little bit too committed sometimes. So I'll have this message box in here. Uh, take a break. You work too hard. And maybe I'll uh, close off the speech marks for a start. Uh, pop in a little icon. Where's the information one? There it is. So I've got myself a message box. But now the important thing, to get this to reoccur. So I want to start here by creating a variable. Now the reason for this variable will become apparent as this video progresses. We don't necessarily need it for the operation of this reoccurring macro, but uh, there is an important reason to come. I'm going to call it um, run timer, and I'm going to give it the data type of a date. And I'm putting it before the procedure here because I'm actually going to have another procedure soon which will use that also. I'm now going to set a time to that runtime variable. Now this is where the reoccurring time will come. So what I want to set to that is I want to set the current time, so now the current date and time, plus this specified number of minutes or hours and to put that in I'm going to use the time value function so I'm going to write time value and then I'll put in my open bracket so it prompts me for the time as a string so let me put in my speech marks and I can put 00, zero colon 00, zero colon uh, and maybe uh, 20 seconds so, uh, we have the time for our hours, our minutes, and our seconds. Now, I'm using 20 seconds here because we will want to see this message box working. And we don't want to have to wait too long in this video to see that. But typically, you may wish to use these first two to set kind of every two hours or every four hours, or the second lot for specifying minute intervals, such as every 10 minutes or every 30 minutes. So that's been assigned to this variable for use. So now what we're going to do is use the application dot on time event. And this is the way you want to do it, the on time event. This will now prompt you for the earliest time that it can be run. So notice the way they phrase that, the earliest time. They can't guarantee it will happen exactly on that second because it may have to wait for other procedures that you've got running to finish first it will just join the queue but it will be close enough to that time unless you've got some really heavy labor going uh, then it will ask for the procedure as a string and we've got two optional arguments of the latest time in the schedule now the earliest time is going to be that run timer variable it's going to be 20 seconds from whatever the current time is we're then going to put in our comma, so it prompts us for the procedure to run. And I'm going to run the procedure called take a break, which is this procedure. So I'm going to run myself. 
it's going to come into a loop. This is going to start this macro, set the timer for 20 seconds time, run this macro, which is the message box, come back round in 20 seconds time, it runs again and sets itself to start in another 20 seconds time. And that just keeps on happening. So that is it. We have our macro. So what I'd like to do next is I want this to begin at some point. Now normally we would start a macro by pressing some kind of button maybe, uh, which would perform an operation when we want. But if I want this macro just to automatically keep happening every 20 seconds, I'm going to come into the this workbook object so that I can get this macro to begin when the workbook is opened. So I will select workbook from this procedure list and then I'll uh, leave it as the open workbook. And in here, I'm simply going to ask it to call uh, take a break. Had to think a moment while I called it. So that is the name of this sub, take a break. Every time the workbook is opened, call that macro. So it begins that process. So if I was to save this macro, and if I close this workbook down, And then I can restart my Excel, because I've just closed that, and I'll reopen my recurring macro workbook. And here it prompts me to take a break. I haven't done that yet, let's ignore that for the moment. This is just an example, and hopefully if we can just wait a few more seconds, we will be prompted again to take a break, which will be very nice. Here it is, <laughs> didn't have to wait too long. And I can OK again, and that's starting a procedure again. So maybe what we've decided is that it might be nice to have a way of stopping that macro at some point. So sometimes while you're working, you might not want that operation, whatever it is that you've set your macro to do, here it's this message box, um, to stop occurring. Now for this example, I'm just going to draw a little button on my sheet, but we can start these macros, uh, or in this case a macro to stop a macro, but we can get these to work in any way that we wish to be the case. So I'll just say stop the break message. So I could get it to run when the workbook is closed or, or any other occurrence. I'm just gonna have a button on my sheet for now, where's my alignment buttons? Let's make that look lovely. And I'll come into the code. And I'm going to set up another sub here, which I'll call stop the messages. And in this sub, I on the application on time event and then I'm going to set the schedule as false. So I'm just putting false on the end there so that will stop that code. Now it's important here that the run timer, let me go and uh, actually run that first so this message doesn't keep coming up. Let me assign a macro to that button so that now if I press that button, that is going to stop that message keep coming up. Let me switch back to my code. And I wanted to mention that it's important, the reason I've used that variable, that the run timers are the same. So for this to work, to be able to stop that message, the time it runs must be the same. And if I put that, nine, that, that sorry now and time value, into the on time event directly, I can't guarantee that they're going to happen at the same time because one of them will have to wait for the other one to finish. There was going to be, I guess, a few hundredths of a second behind. But by using the same variable, I know they're the same. They get set at the same time, therefore they are. And that is why I wanted that way of operating it earlier. 
Now you can probably tell that that message is not coming up anymore now because it hasn't interfered any further, which is kind of the proof in the pudding that I guess that uh, that button has successfully stopped that reoccurring. Uh, because we didn't really see anything visual happen, you know, it might be an idea to put a message box in there to say, you know, the messages have been stopped. Uh, but we kind of know that because uh, we haven't seen them anymore. But depending what your macro's operation is, it may not be something that is visible to the user's eye. So a nice message box prompting them that they did press that button. Um, it has successfully stopped itself. Uh, may be worth its while. So in this video, we had a message box reoccurring, just telling us to take a break, which is important in our working lives, but not so important as I guess a macro example. There are far more beneficial and um, more profound ways of using such a technique. But being able to run our macro every X number of minutes or hours is quite a common question by Excel uh, users. So I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of uh, our other videos on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.